All right, so we'll go ahead and kick things off. Again, welcome into our webinar discussing topics of using your gap year to gain global connections and work experience with virtual internships. My name is Tyler DeVici. I am the current uh, digital content manager with virtual internships. And I'm gonna be here speaking to you today about some of the reasons why students might consider joining our program during their gap year. We're gonna really give a lot of background into the program, the inclusions, the customization. So um, hopefully it, it is very informative to you and you do take a lot away from this, uh, you know, this webinar. At the end, what we're gonna do is open it up to a Q&A. So as you're watching our presentation, if you do think of a question, feel free to go ahead and drop it into the Q&A feature at the bottom of the screen. Um, don't put it in the chat, put it in the Q&A, that way we can go ahead and sort things. I'm gonna be uh, enlisting the help of my incredible colleague, Kellen, who will join us at the end for the Q&A feature. Uh, so Kellen, do you just wanna quickly say hello to everybody? Hi everyone, as Tyler said, my name's Kellen Townsend and I'm a university partnership manager with virtual internships in CRCC Asia. And I will join back in at the end and help Tyler answer all of your questions. Thank you so much, Kellen. And again, feel free to go ahead and place questions in the Q&A and we will go ahead and get started. Uh, so firstly, I want to talk to you a little bit about some background into what is a virtual international internship. So you've probably heard this term, especially recently, the last few months with the coronavirus, COVID-19 pandemic really derailing uh, many, many businesses and internships alike. Uh, many students there, their internships for the summer have uh, unfortunately been canceled and they're now kind of without plans. And so uh, what we wanted to do is talk a little bit about how our program does kind of try to uh, fill that void. So whether you call it a remote internship, an online internship, you've maybe heard like telecommuting or teleworking, they all mean the exact same thing. So completing a work experience or in our case an internship without a commute. So you're not actually going into an office and working in person, you're doing everything from a computer. Whether it's a laptop in your home or going to a coffee shop, um, it really just allows students to gain this experience without having to physically enter into an office. So while you're completing this internship from home, you are still fully supervised and supported. So not only do you have supervisor with your company that you'd be placed with, but you also have a great deal of support from our team with virtual internships. And we're gonna go into that support structure later on and kind of explain that piece by piece. Now, it is kind of a bit of a misconception that, well, a remote working you know, experience can't be the same as an in-person experience. You know, there's gotta be a lot of differences. And while there do exist some differences between the two, many of the same aspects of an in-person work experience do still uh, filter over to a virtual internship. So very often meeting with your supervisor or your teammates, um, getting to work on a, a, a group projects and different types of collaborative opportunities, and really just getting to learn more about not only the company that you're placed in, but the culture a large amount of our uh, companies are all around the world in different cultures in Asia and Europe. And so it really allows students a glimpse into a cultural opportunity that you may not get, especially right now with travel being completely derailed. So now what I wanna first off explain is why would a student or an individual want to complete a virtual internship? What are some of the takeaways? What are some of the things that this can enhance? Now, this list is definitely not all encompassing. You could probably be here you know, for hours talking about the, the benefits of our program, but I do narrow it down typically to a couple that I think are incredibly important to feature. The first one is the experience to gain a global network. So if you've ever spoken to a career coach or you're in any courses that, that kind of center around HR, things like that, you've probably heard the term networking and how important it is to have a diverse network and people who you've worked with who you can potentially look to for recommendation letters or even offering future job opportunities. So enrolling in a virtual internship is allowing you a chance to engage with colleagues all around the world, like we said. So creating this very diverse professional network, especially outside of your home country, which can be very beneficial if you believe you're somebody who may be seeking a full-time career outside of your home country, which a lot of people are, especially now. 
Um, so again, great chance to build that network, work with people all around the world and, and just see what really is out there and, and what types of people are there to offer their guidance and their experience to you. Standing out to employers, of course, something that everybody wants to do and, and, and you know, really just kind of see how they can be a unique person that someone would want to hire, right? So when you're remote working, Kellen and I can both attest to this as we've been doing this for several months. Um, it does require a very different set of skills than it would be if you were working in person, particularly those skills that relate to the idea of working autonomously, which is basically working you know, on your own without a ton of direction and supervision all the time. So things like time management, you know, how do you manage your time when your supervisor is not standing over your shoulder every five minutes and, and you know, trying to, to get on, get you on stuff. Um, same thing with self-discipline, right? So with the flexibility that remote work does offer, it is great. You have a lot more time because um, you're not commuting every day. But with that free time, it can sometimes be easier to slack off because you have all these distractions in your home, whether you have children or other things going on, or it's just like today, a beautiful day outside here in, in the U.S. Um, so you really need to develop self-discipline, which really stands out to employers, especially today given that there are going to be uh, more pushes to remote work because of this, this pandemic really not showing any signs of, of ending anytime soon. Now the tangible experience, right? You're completing uh, an internship for a couple months. This is actually a tangible experience that you're gonna then put on your resume or your CV, which is going to essentially enhance your existing portfolio of experience. If this is your first ever internship, or even if you've done five internships in your past, this is a very unique opportunity given that it is internationally focused. So it will just continue to enhance your existing resume and your CV. And in addition to that, you're also developing these great professional skills. So if you get a technology internship, you're increasing your coding ability, things like that. So you're gonna also add that onto sections of your CV or resume. And really just exploring your future. So any type of work experience, whether it's an internship or full-time job, it is helping you to see kind of what your goals might be down the line and where you essentially see yourself. Um, from the perspective of myself, who has completed many internships in my time, especially in university, internships are vital to career exploration. You either see what you like in the industry, and if you gain experience in your, you know, say your field of study and you really like it, you're now applying these concepts that you've been studying for years in school and finally putting them into use in the real world. That is, of course, a marvelous experience. Also, if you get an internship in your field and you decide, wow, I actually really don't like this, uh, I might be needing to take a bit of a pivot and, and maybe look for something else when I'm you know, going for a full-time job, that is equally important. So getting to kind of get your feet wet and really just get a glimpse for your field, whether it's you like it or you don't, it is very important and everybody should participate in some type of internship. So this should be, you know, your opportunity, especially now if you're if you're in a gap year or about to start a gap year, you're going to have a lot of time. And so we're going to talk more about how this program fits very well into that. So the program, so the virtual internship program, what is it? What does it include? How much is it? When does it take place? We're going to pretty much hit piece by piece again as we're going through any questions, feel free to drop them in the Q&A function. So why choose virtual internships? Um, there are uh, numerous companies right now that are doing this type of opportunity. They're offering you know, remote working experiences or volunteering experience, educational opportunities remotely, things like that. So why choose VI? Why choose virtual internships? Well, we do offer a lot of interesting features in our program. The first that we always like to highlight is a guaranteed internship placement. So. Every student who partakes in our program and pays our program fee is guaranteed an internship. And we're going to talk about what the different options are for that in a second. So you're guaranteed to have an opportunity to now build uh, work experience and, and develop yourself professionally. That is, that is a guarantee in our program. All of our host companies all around the world, and you know, we have hundreds upon hundreds of companies all around the world. All of them are vetted by our team not only to meet you know, quality standards, but also to make sure that they have a good understanding of how to support a remote intern. Because this is a bit of a different experience, hosting a remote intern versus hosting an in-person intern. So we wanna ensure that our companies that we're sending students to have these support structures in place. And we also do have a great deal of support for not only our interns, 
but for our host companies as well. And 360 degree support. So I mentioned this before, but in a remote internship, it is a little bit different. It's kind of can be sometimes easy for students to feel a little bit disconnected and maybe a little bit more lost because there's not a supervisor right next to you uh, to ask for a question if you ever have one. So not only do you have your supervisor with your company, but you're also assigned what's called a program experience manager, which is a, a virtual internship staff member who will work with you from right when you commit to the program until you finish. So they're there for any questions. You typically meet with them um, once a week on our Google Hangouts chats, and they're really just there to conduct some internship coaching calls in addition to your internship coach and just hope that you hope to help you get the most out of your virtual internship experience. So virtual internships, what is it? So what we're describing in this slideshow is our traditional uh, internship that is designed for students who have essentially graduated from high school. So probably the you know, ages of 18 or older. We do have a high school program for younger students between say 14 to 18, if you are curious about that. Uh, for yourself or someone else you know, that is on our website under the Virtual Internships Foundations program. So our traditional internship program, we've been around for a few years now. 2017 is when we launched our program. And what we did was we designed this internship around a great deal of support and customization for the students. No two of our interns are alike. Um, they have different things going on in their life that they need to kind of arrange this internship around. They also have different goals and what they're looking to get out of the program. So we need to make sure that we are able to appeal to all different types of students, whether they're in college and you know 20 to 25, whether they're well into their career or they have children or they have other opportunities that they need to be able to juggle alongside this. So that's one thing we're very excited about our program. It's very flexible and very customizable. So for example, Students who want to participate in our program, you do have a few choices you want to think about. The first choice is how long do you want to complete your internship for? We allow for durations of one, two, or three months. The pricing for the program is a very flat rate. It is $1,595 US dollars. That is the same whether you do a one month internship or three months. So think about how long you want to do the program for. It's completely up to you. The price is no different. In addition to that, you also get to select your weekly hours, whether you want to commit 20 or 30 hours per week. So theoretically, you could do this program uh, at the same time as something else. Maybe you're only able to commit the 20 hours per week because you have another opportunity you're taking place or taking part in or you're just ready to go ahead and commit the full 30 hours to this program a week. Whatever you choose is completely up to you. Like I said, we wanted to make sure that all types of students could, could think about joining our program. And so basically with, with the placement in the internship, you can choose to focus on one country or one career field or multiple countries or career fields. And that is a bit confusing. So in a future slide, we're gonna explain exactly what that means. And you can see by this image at the bottom of the screen, these are some of our inclusions. So in addition to just the internship that you'd be working in, we also allow for other inclusions to help just enhance your full experience. So we talked already about having the full-time support of a program experience manager. You also have an internship coach who conducts your midpoint and final check-in calls with. We also allow access to the Rosetta Stone language learning program for three months. Uh, the reason why we wanted to include this was because there is an international focus to our program. So if you are, let's say, connected with a company in Japan and you want to maybe learn a little bit of introductory Japanese because you're very interested in that, we wanted to allow access to that language learning program for that exact reason. In addition to the language learning, we also have our own online curriculum that we call Career Bridge. We'll explain that in a minute. Uh, which is basically kind of our online curriculum with modules to overview a lot of topics that will help you in your internship. And we also do uh, several group discussions and webinars in addition to the work you'll be doing in the, in, with the company. So we'll go through all of those later on. So the process, so the virtual internship process, um, how do you join? How easy is it? How long is it before I know my company? Let's talk about all of that. So we're starting with the admissions process. So essentially any student, if you're, if you're watching our slideshow and you're very interested in uh, potentially applying to this program, let's kind of break that down as it is a pretty straightforward process. 
essentially what you want to firstly do is go on our website, which is uh, virtualinternships.com. So you're going to go on virtualinternships.com and you can find the application page under the university internships tab. Basically, your first step before you even start the application is you want to think about which of the program focuses you are going to select. So we narrowed it down to two choices to make things as easy as possible. You do need to choose one of these two, so think about which one might appeal to you the most. So starting with track one, this is what we would call the international focus. This option would be very well suited for someone who is focused on building a network and gaining work experience in a specific culture or a specific country. So for example, let's say that you have a very deep interest in China. You want to get an internship in China because you see yourself maybe wanting to move there one day and, and get a full-time job. So a China internship is what you're going for. You would then select the international focus. What this allows you to do is select your number one choice of the country in which your internship company is located. We will then guarantee that your company is located in that number one choice country. On the other side of that, with that option, you will then select your top three choices for the career fields. So let's say your number one choice career field is business, second is marketing, third is real estate. We will guarantee your internship falls in that number one choice country, let's say it's China, and then you'll get an internship in one of those three career field options. So the country is guaranteed. You are not guaranteed your number one choice career field in this choice. Now on the flip side, the career field focus, which is track number two, is pretty much the exact opposite of that. So this option would be very well suited for someone who wants to get experience in a very specific career field, or you have a very focused career goal, but you're a little bit more open to where in the world the opportunity may be located. So in this, in this option, you're gonna select your number one choice career field. Let's say it is technology. You are very keen on a technology internship because this is the career you're gonna enter and you wanna get your feet wet in this field. So technology, great. So we will guarantee your internship is in that number one choice career field. And then you're gonna select your top three choices for the location in which the company is located. We will guarantee you the number one choice career field and you will get one of the three options for your company's country where, they, where they're located. So again, they, they are quite different in kind of what the focus and what the guarantee is. So you do want to think about which of the two is, is more important to you um, because again, you're going to need to make a decision for one or the other. So let's talk about the options within both of those. So the career field. So these are all of the different industries that virtual internships has placements in. So we're pretty much all over the board, as you can see, marketing, healthcare, engineering, creative design, recruitment and HR. So as you read through this list, um, definitely think about which of the fields appeal most to you, whether it's because it coincides with your major and this is the field that you see yourself entering, or maybe you're already in a job and you've done a couple years in a full-time gig and you're looking to change career fields. This also can, can be a great opportunity for that as well. So depending on which of the options on the previous slide you select, you're either gonna be choosing one of these options or three of these options. So again, think very, think very uh, long about that. And same thing with the location. So uh, virtual internships actually has placements in over 60 countries at this point. The reason why we showcase these six, so China, India, Japan, South Korea, United Kingdom, Vietnam, is because these six countries are where we have the largest networks of companies. And so these, right now, these are the six companies that we're able to guarantee for the international focus. So basically when you apply to the program, you're either gonna be selecting one of these locations as the guaranteed location or three of them. So think long and hard. Another great point that I always like to bring up with this is Potentially think about how your fields of interest relate to the options for the countries. For example, if we go back to the previous slide, there are naturally some fields that are very well established in certain countries and not so well established in others. Legal is a great field in, say, the UK and China. Um, South Korea and Japan are very well known for their technology field. Uh, so think about how those relate together because there is a lot of correlation and if you are curious, definitely give yourself a quick Google search and see if there's some very popular industries in the, um, 
country that you're potentially exploring. So once you've thought about that and once you've decided to take either the international or the career field focus, you are then going to want to actually submit the application form. So again, it's on our website, virtualinternships.com. It is a pretty basic application form. It really only takes like two or three minutes. Just ask for some basic contact details. Um, it also asks for your program start date. So another good feature of the virtual internships program is we have a wide variety of start dates. We pretty much have a start date every other Monday from literally now until the end of the year. So you have a lot of flexibilities when you can start. Um, so look at that on our website. Look at which dates might appeal most to you. You're going to pick, again, a placement focus. You're going to then choose your options for that. Um, you're also going to pick your duration, so one, two, or three months, and then either 20 or 30 hours a week. We also do ask for a resume and a CV. This helps us get a bit of background on you and kind of see what your previous experience has been and kind of match that with what you're potentially going for. So again, the application form itself takes very little time. Once you have submitted this, there actually is a second step to the application, which is what we call our virtual video application. So this is a little bit more kind of engaging. Um, our wonderful colleague Waverly uh, recorded herself asking these questions to potential applicants on our program. I believe Kellen also did some of those videos as well. Um, so what this does is we ask you some questions that we feel are very pertaining, what well, pertain very highly to the program. So, um, you know, you've applied for this program. So why are you interested in completing a virtual internship? Um, how have you successfully worked in a team before? What are some challenges you believe you'll encounter in this program? So when we ask you these via video, we actually want you to respond to us via video. So you will record yourself answering all five of these questions out loud to your computer, basically. And this kind of has two main functions. The first function is we want you to get used to seeing yourself and hearing yourself on the computer screen because working remotely, Kellen and I can both attest to this. You're going to be doing that quite a lot. So it is just to kind of get you a little bit of a comfortable um, to, to speaking to a computer. The second reason is because we actually want to hear from you and, and verbally hear why you want to do this program, not just based on your application form, not just based on your resume. Why do you genuinely want to participate in this program? Do you have a realistic idea of what this is? And basically just what are you getting get out of What do you want to get out of this? So you will record your video applications, and once you have done all of these, this probably takes maybe 10 or 15 minutes or so. There's only five questions. And once we've received both your video application and your application form, you then basically just have to wait a few days. Um, it takes a couple days for us to review all of these applications and kind of determine your, uh, you know, your eligibility. So just sit tight after that. You will receive an email within a couple business days, maybe one or two with your admissions decision. So once we've gone through and our team has reviewed your application, if you are indeed seen as a qualified candidate, we will actually send you an email that is your official offer letter. So what that's gonna say is, hi Tyler, thank you for your application to the virtual internships program. We feel like you have great skills and qualities to join us. Um, basically, here is your official acceptance email with information, kind of laying out the program details that you put on the application. And if you want to amend any of those, you just need to reply to that email with, with what changes you're going to request. If you have any kind of urgent, immediate questions, you can also use the link in the email to book a call with your assigned program experience manager. Now, while you have been at that point offered admission into the program, you are not yet committed to the program. We are not starting to look for companies. You are not considered a participant on our program until you submit a portion of the program fee. So this is a slide that I really want to emphasize because there's a couple of very important pieces of information. So I mentioned this earlier, the total program fee for our internship is 1,595 US dollars. It does vary slightly whether it's Australian dollars or New Zealand dollars or Great Britain pounds, but this is what it is in, in US dollars. You can see this on our website. So. In order to take part in our program, you do need to be prepared to pay this program fee. Essentially what happens is when you receive that offer letter, the way that you go ahead and commit yourself to the program and have us start actually placing you at a company is to submit a portion of that total program fee. This payment, this first payment is what we call the acceptance fee. 
it's essentially 50% of that 1595. So to make things even for that acceptance fee, we typically say $800. So if you're saying, you know what, this program seems great. I'm, I'm ready to get this started. I can't wait. Let's go ahead and get things kicked off. And you go ahead and submit that $800 acceptance fee. We are then going to start the placement process and you are then considered a participant on our program. The remaining amount, which in this case would be $795, is not due until you are actually committed with a host company. So that's likely a, a little bit down the line. If you want to go ahead and submit the full $1595 initially, that's perfectly fine. Some students just want to get it all paid at once, but you don't have to. We do split it up half and half. Now, there is a very important point that all students need to understand when thinking about our program. That is that virtual internships needs to have you confirm your acceptance by, again, submitting that initial $800 acceptance fee no later than six weeks prior to your intended start date. So unfortunately, you cannot apply to the program and aim to start July 1st at this point. The reason why we need at least six weeks buffer zone is because it takes quite a while to have you actually confirmed with the company. We have to reach out to them. We have to get you interviews. You have to then go ahead and accept it. That does not happen overnight. So again, six weeks is a very firm cutoff date. So at this point, you know, June, June what, 25th, um, you are basically looking at some time in probably early August for, a, the, for the earliest start date that you could look at. And again, just check our website, check all the start dates, and just make sure that you have at least six weeks from when you pay that acceptance fee to when you're looking to start. So I wanna now review quickly the placement process. I've mentioned this term many times, the placement process, get your internship placement started. What the heck does that mean, right? It's important to break that down. So virtual internships follows a, what we call linear placement process. What this basically means is that when you are committed to the program and we're gonna start reaching out to companies in all over the world to potentially get you confirmed with them, we only are going to set you up with one company at a time. So let's say you join our program and we have a really good company in mind that we think you fit very well at. We're gonna reach out to them. We're going to see, hey, you know, we have this great student. Here's their profile. Here's their resume. What do you think? And if this, the company says, you know what? The student looks great. We wanna go ahead and offer them an interview. We will set you up with the company. You'll do the interview. And in the event that an offer is made and they're, they're asking you to join their company, you basically then have to decide, is that company your choice or are you going to potentially decline that offer? What we basically avoid is we're not going to give the student an option to see more than one or two placement opportunities at a time. It just makes everything very confusing because in the end, if we give you five offers, four of those companies are then going to not have an intern, right? So what we want to do is if you get an offer and you're just really not feeling it, we're gonna unfortunately then have to decline that offer and that opportunity is then gonna be completely off the table. We can't say, well, I got this great offer and I kinda just wanna see what else is out there. We, we just cannot do that because then that company is just sitting around waiting. And in the event that you decline them, now they're without an intern, right? They, we wanna respect the companies. That if you're not into it, they have other applicants that they can look at. So one company at a time, this is just how our process works and it is very successful for us in just keeping things very linear as the name suggests. So that's the placement process. Now we're gonna talk a little bit about the experience, about you as an intern, what do you get to have access to? What does it look like? Let's jump into that. So program support. I mentioned this at the beginning of the slideshow. Our program is designed with quite a bit of support built in, not only for you as the intern, but also for the companies as well. Um, so it is really a, a fact that completing a remote internship does present a bit of a risk for the students to feel isolated or disconnected. You're not going into the office every day. You're not seeing your colleagues every single day and having that in-person office atmosphere. So we really need to try to supplement that as best as we can. So what we've done is we've created several touch points between the student and you know, the program to just help them build a sense of community and feel like they are having these great connections. So we mentioned this already, the program experience manager, they are really your, your lifeline for any questions. If you're having problems getting a hold of your supervisor or you're just confused about something, your program experience manager is kind of your first line of help, um, in addition to your actual company supervisor, of course. 
The internship coach is really there to complete two main check-in calls. One that happens at the middle of your internship in which we say, okay, you're halfway done at this point. Let's take a look back on some of the things you've done. Let's maybe look at some of the things you might have struggled with. And now that we have, you know, the other half of the internship to go, what are we going to look to do better? What, what, what success have we achieved that we want to build on as we finish the program? Let's talk all about that. The end of the internship call is really to kind of summarize this experience and see how we're best then going to put that on your resume, your CV, and just, you know, essentially explain this in future opportunities. The group discussions are really a chance for you to connect with the other interns. You may very well be the, the only intern that's placed at your company. So right now for this summer, we're hosting close to a thousand students. So we want to give the students a chance and the interns a chance to connect with one another. We're going to explain how those work in a minute. Uh, same with the business webinar, webinar, same thing with the career bridge. We'll jump into that. And we already talked about the three months access to Rosetta Stone. If you do choose to take part in this, excellent. It is included in the program free of charge. So career bridge, what is it? So we, one, a couple of our incredible colleagues in the past created what is called career bridge, which is our global internship curriculum. This is essentially created as a, uh, as a complement to your actual internship experience. So what this includes is a, a lot of great modules to help with different topics pertaining to completing a remote internship. One of the very helpful ones, in my opinion, is the pre-departure modules, which basically are meant to be completed before you actually start your internship. So let's say that you get an internship with a company in Japan, and you're obviously excited, it's a great opportunity, but you have no idea what to expect from a company in Japan. You don't know anything about Japanese business culture, business etiquette. You just have no idea what that's going to look like. That is where CareerBridge is going to come in. We have modules to consider all the different cultures of working, preparing you for an internship in China, in Japan, in South Korea, getting your resume ready for you know review, um, helping you to kind of just plan out your internship, getting some skills ready, making sure your, your Wi-Fi and everything is good to go. So again, pre-departure modules are very helpful in addition to the modules that are meant to be completed during the internship and then also after the internship as well. So a great resource. Um, many of our universities that we work with actually make this mandatory for their students because it is part of the internship course that they're doing. While CareerBridge to all students is not technically mandatory, it is an incredible resource and you receive this great certificate if you do complete the thing in its entirety, the modules. So really think about diving into that, getting some of the great enrichment through the, the courses that align very closely with what are called the NACE uh, career readiness competencies. And in addition to career bridge, we mentioned these already, the additional supports. So weekly group discussions every week. I just actually did one back on uh, Tuesday, I believe. We do weekly group hangouts through the Google Hangouts feature where all of our students can join this kind of big chat room and we have a moderator who kind of leads the, the, the group in discussion questions, um, talking about some of the things that are going well in your internship, the challenges that you might be facing, any you know, questions or concerns. That's really your chance to take part in a very structured group discussion and also hear about what some of the other interns are working on. Are they having some of the same problems? Um, what are they looking forward to in their internship? So just a great way to communicate with other interns and have that you know, group connection feeling. Now the business webinars are also an excellent uh, touch point for the students and the interns to um, hear from very experienced professionals. So these typically are every other week sometimes. It can either be like webinar topics kind of like this. So we, we can review different topics like creating smart goals, how to start a global career, how to succeed in your internship. Or we can also have a speaker series where we bring in a professional from a you know, CEO from a certain company or an entrepreneur talking about their experiences in the field, things that they wish they would have done differently and kind of their advice to you as a, you know, potentially a younger, less experienced professional in, in sharing their knowledge and their experience with all of you guys. Now the language lessons are also a great opportunity. We did talk about this. It's, it's really fun to kind of learn a, a new language at your own pace if you have the interest. There's, Rosetta Stone is great in that it has a huge selection of, of languages that you can look into um, for your three months access. So those are the inclusions. And if you have any uh, questions on those, you can drop them in the Q&A feature or review our website to see exactly what you're getting for the program payment fee. 
And these are things that we always like to share as well. These are just some uh, what we call testimonials from previous virtual interns from some of our uh, university cohorts. So these are really fun because these are a chance to hear from the words of actual virtual intern alumni and what they enjoyed about the program. These are just three of them. Um, if you want to read more of these, you can go on our website. We do have our testimonials on there. We also do have quite a bit of reviews on some of those platforms like Trustpilot, where interns can write about their experience and talk about what they liked about the program, maybe what they didn't like, and it's just a very good transparent view at our program. So definitely give those a read if you have the interest. Now we're kind of coming to the end of the content portion. Um, just to quickly share some additional resources, if you've really enjoyed learning about the virtual internship program and you think this might be something that you'd want to join up with, Again, first, first uh, best resource would be our website. We have everything on there with our blog and our content, photos, everything. So take a look at the website. Another great point of resources is our YouTube channel. Um, we've been really working to give this some, some attention the past couple of months. And what we do on our YouTube channel is we upload a bunch of very short, maybe one or two minute videos about different topics. You can see in this top row here, you know, why complete a virtual internship in 60 seconds? how to actually go through the application process if you're having trouble. We also do upload all of our previous webinars. So longer kind of sessions like this one, you know, maybe 30 minutes to an hour that contain certain topics, you know, eight reasons to consider a virtual internship this summer, how to succeed at a virtual internship. Myself and Kellen have both done some of these webinars so you can hear our voices again if you want. Um, and this is again, a really great first resource. Another great resource is our blog. This is something that I manage personally, and it contains a wide variety of content on many different topics. Um, you know, five hard skills that you should develop now, um, what skills employers are looking for, how to stay safe when working online and keep your privacy safe. This blog that I definitely recommend you take a look at because it's very pertinent to this particular topic is how a virtual internship can fit into your gap year. If you go on our website, virtualinternships.com slash blog, you can read all of these blog topics. And again, I think this one might be very interesting to you. We cover some of these topics, like how a virtual internship can help prepare you for the next step of your journey, right? You're taking some time off between whether it's high school to college or college to graduate school or finishing up university and now you're gonna enter the full-time job, but you're just not ready yet to start that kind of long-term commitment. Um, you know, why is this a good thing to fit into that type of you know, time off? and basically talking about how we have these options of, of uh, duration, so it can really fit into any gap year, and also how it can allow you to gain these great experience and skills to add to your resume or your portfolio and help consider your next move. So take a look at that. So that is the end of the content portion of the slideshow. Um, what we wanna do now is jump into the Q&A. If anybody has dropped questions in the Q&A box, I am going to loop back in my wonderful colleague, Kellen, to hopefully read some of your questions and she will give me some help as well in answering them. So Kellen, I will turn it over to you for the questions. All right, great, thank you, Tyler. And um, so the first question that we have, and you just kind of touched on this a little bit, but why is it a good idea to do a virtual internship during a gap year? Excellent question, thank you for submitting that. So. Yes, we did kind of briefly touch on this, but there's a few reasons why I say that this is a very good option for the gap year. The first, the first notion is assuming your gap year is actually going to be a full year or even just six months. Well, given that you can select a variety of durations, whether it's just one month or three months, it really does fit into pretty much any amount of time that you might be taking off. So if you're taking a full year of time off and you already have some travel planned and you already have a volunteering opportunity planned and if you maybe you just have two or three months left of nothing planned and you want to find some way to fill that i believe a virtual internship is a great thing to add to your existing plans for your gap year if you only have a month and you only can do that and only can commit the 20 hours per week i still believe it's excellent experience it's great exposure to your potential industry gives you a really good first glimpse and not only that, but the international focus, even if you've done a bunch of internships domestically, having this experience with a company in another country is very powerful, especially on a resume and a CV. It introduces you to a new culture. It increases your cultural competency and just allows you to open your mind, open your perspectives and 
potentially experience a completely new way of working that you might never be used to. So whether you're taking a gap year and you're aiming to do this program or right now, given that it's June and most people are off for summer break and you don't have anything set up, potentially think about that as well. It's a great use of your time. If you still are in, unfortunately, in quarantine, wherever you are in the world, um, this is a great opportunity. It doesn't involve any travel and really helps to break down those barriers on location. So that would be my input. Kellen, would you say anything to add to that? I think you did a really great job, Tyler. The only thing that I would add is I think it kind of helps you stay connected to the working world during your um, doing a virtual internship. When you take that gap year, like you said, you have a lot of opportunities to travel and do volunteer work and do a lot of really amazing things that you wouldn't get the opportunity to do. But even just doing a one or two month virtual internship will show future employers that you are still thinking about your career and your professional development, even when you are taking that gap year for yourself. And I think it's a great way just to kind of stay connected to that working world. So then when you're ready to go back to a job or grad school, you can more easily jump back in. Completely agree. That is excellent input. And yes, I, I think that, you know, keeping connected and also keeping up with the trends as they're changing every day, um, very important to make sure that you are on top of your game and understand what's going on in your, in your field. So wonderful. Kellen, um, any other questions after that one? So just one more question. What kind of companies would I potentially work with during a virtual internship? Wonderful. So we do have, as I said, a very broad network of companies, hundreds upon hundreds of all sizes. So we have larger companies. Most of our companies do fall in what we call the small to medium enterprise. So maybe somewhere between five or you know 50 colleagues. Um, they can be domestically focused, so they can just be located in one country. They can have several global offices. And we mentioned those career fields already. So everything from business to finance to technology, um, your specific fields, depending on what you are going for, might have some uh, more deviation uh, ability. So in finance, for example, we have companies in venture capital, in fintech, in investment banking. So um, yeah, really a ton of great companies to work with. A lot of them, like I said, are on the smaller end. So that can really allow you an excellent chance to make an impact in a smaller company see what it's like to work at a bit of a smaller agency, maybe one that's only a couple years old. Um, and again, we also do have the large company offerings as well. So really depending on what you're, you know, what you're going for, we probably have a company or several that would fit with your interests. Um, Kellen, any, anything to add to that? No, Tyler, I think you did a great job. Um, and that is all of our questions for today. So thank you so much. Thank you, Kellen, for your assistance. And, and yes, thank you to everybody who submitted questions. We hope that this was informative and interesting to you. And, and hopefully you are you know, thinking about this program, at least in some regard, whether it's for your gap year or any other time um, to participate. So like I said, if you want some more resources, feel free to check out our website. There's plenty of information there, our blog, our YouTube page. If you have any specific questions, you can also reach out to our email address, which is hello at virtualinternships.com. That is received by our entire team. So depending on the nature of your question, it will be received and you will receive a response from the appropriate team. And of course, if you feel like you are very interested and you, you wanna go ahead and get your process started, please think about submitting an application. And again, thank you to everybody who's joined us today. We, we hope you found this informative and we wish you the very best of luck and hope to see you very soon on one of the programs. Thank you again.